youth, I am sure that if one could understand the separation of tasks and put it into practice, one's interpersonal relationships would all at once become free. But I still can't accept it. Philosopher, go on. I'm listening. Youth, I think that, in theory, the separation of tasks is entirely right. What other people think of me, or what sort of judgment they pass on me, is the task of other people, and is not something I can do anything about. And I should just do what I have to do in my life without lying. I'd have no problem if you said this is a life truth, that's how right I think it is. But, consider this, from an ethical or moral point of view, could it be said to be the right thing to do? That is to say, a way of living that draws boundaries between oneself and others. Because wouldn't you be brushing other people away and saying that's intervention whenever they were worried about you and asked how you're doing? It seems to me that this is something that treads on the goodwill of others. Philosopher, have you heard of the man known as Alexander the Great? Youth, Alexander the Great? Yes, I learned about him in world history. Philosopher, he was a Macedonian king, who lived in the 4th century before Christ. When he was advancing on the Persian kingdom of Lydia, he learned of a chariot enshrined in the Acropolis. The chariot had been secured tightly to a pillar in the temple by Gordias, the former king, and there was a local legend that said, he who unravels this knot shall be master of Asia. It was a tightly wound knot that many men of skill had been certain they could unbind, but no one had succeeded. Now, what do you think Alexander the Great did when he stood before this knot? Youth. Well, didn't he unravel the legendary knot with ease, and go on to become the ruler of Asia? Philosopher. No, that's not how it happened. As soon as Alexander the Great saw how tight the knot was, he pulled out his sword and sliced it in half with one stroke. Youth. Wow. Youth. Is distance necessary even in the kind of relationship that parents and children have? Philosopher. Of course. Earlier, you said that the separation of tasks is something that treads on the other person's goodwill. That is a notion that is tied to reward. It's the idea that when another person does something for you, you have to do something in return even if that person does not want anything. Rather than responding to the goodwill, it is just being tied to reward. No matter what sort of appeal the other person might make, you are the only one who decides what you should do. Youth. Reward is at the root of what I am calling ties. Philosopher, yes. When reward is at the base of an interpersonal relationship, there's a feeling that wells up in one that says, I gave this much, so you should give me that much back. This is a notion that is quite different from separation of tasks, of course. We must not seek reward, and we must not be tied to it. Youth, hmm. Philosopher, however, there are certainly situations in which it would be easier to intervene in the tasks of another person without doing any separation of tasks. For instance, in a child-raising situation, when a child is having a hard time tying his shoes. For the busy mother, it is certainly faster to tie them than to wait for him to do it himself. But that is an intervention, and it is taking the child's task away from him. And as a result of repeating that intervention, the child will cease to learn anything and will lose the courage to face his life tasks. As Adler says, children who have not been taught to confront challenges will try to avoid all challenges. Youth, but that is such a dry way of thinking. Philosopher, when Alexander the Great cut the Gordian knot, there were probably those who felt the same way, that the unraveling of the knot by hand had meaning, and that it was a mistake to cut it with a sword, that Alexander had misunderstood the meaning of the oracle's words. In Adlerian psychology, there are aspects that are antithetical to normal social thinking. It denies etiology, denies trauma, and adopts teleology. It treats people's problems as interpersonal relationship problems. And the not seeking of recognition and the separation of tasks, too, are probably antithetical to normal social thinking. Youth, it's impossible. I can't do it. Philosopher, why? The youth was devastated by the separation of tasks that the philosopher had begun describing. When one thought of all one's problems as being in one's interpersonal relationships, the separation of tasks was effective. Just by having this viewpoint, the world would become quite simple. But there was no flesh and blood in it. It gave off no sense of one's warmth as a person. Could anyone accept such a philosophy? The youth rose from his chair and pleaded loudly.